Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I wanted to talk about genre fiction and why I'm coming to think that genre um, is more about mood than anything else. So obviously this channel is very much about genre fiction. Um, you know, when I do reviews on the channel, they are almost always, not exclusively, but almost always about crime or horror books. Um, and I say at the start of every video um, that the channel is about crime, pulp and horror. Um, now, pulp isn't really a genre as such, but crime and horror definitely are. Um, and when we think about genre, I think we tend to think about it in terms of the like the physical trappings of, of the genre if you like so if you think about it from a like a movie perspective if you think about like western you immediately picture you know cowboys in 10 gallon hats with six shooters and horses and so on and so forth um you know if you think about horror um you know you might think about you know like a haunted house or a you know a, a slasher in a slasher movie or you know whatever um we tend to have kind of visual cues or visual things that we expect to see um, in certain genres. Sci-fi, you know, aliens, robots, laser guns, stuff like that. We tend to think about the things rather than the the, the mood that the genre, you know, raises in us. Um, and I was thinking about this. This was kind of a random lying in bed trying to fall asleep um, kind of a thought. Uh, and then I was watching this morning um, a video from a channel called Super Blomper, where Sam, who's the, who's the host of the channel, was talking about all the books that she's read uh, in 2022 and, and was tier ranking them, but was also talking about um, how um, Storygraph had categorised those, you know, had categorised her reading. And, and one of the things that Storygraph, um, you know, uses to kind of measure your reading, I guess, is, is mood. Um, and, you know, Sam is like a big horror reader, um, and and the mood chart um, reflected that. So it was a very kind of down... I'm not sure quite how the the the, uh, the scale works on, on the chart, but it, basically it was kind of downbeat. So yeah, Sam's video got me thinking a bit more about this subject and about how, for me, increasingly, it seems that mood and how a book is going to make me feel is a more important like, denoter of, of the genre of a book than anything else. Um, and one of the reasons, or one of the things that got me thinking about that, uh, about genre generally, was this book, Carol by Patricia Highsmith, originally titled uh, the, Print, uh, the Price of Salt. So I've been reading this, started it yesterday, um, I'm powering through it, I mean, two thirds of the way through, I'm enjoying it enormously. And it's not the sort of book I normally read at all. So, uh, I mean, Patricia Highsmith is, you know, well known as a crime writer, and she's a crime writer I really like, but this is, is not really a crime novel. This is, if you were to categorise this, you'd probably call it like a literary romance. So it's it's basically a romance, but it's kind of a, a highfalutin romance. Um, and it's fantastic. It's so, so good. Um, and this month, uh, I've been reading a lot of horror, as I do, and the vast majority of the horror books I've read, I haven't enjoyed at all. So I didn't enjoy uh, The Institute by Stephen King. I quite enjoyed um, The Girl with All the Gifts. I've got some of them here. So, so The Girl with All the Gifts I finished yesterday. This was exciting. I quite, I quite enjoyed it, uh, but it wasn't fantastic. Uh, the Institute by Stephen King, um, I didn't really enjoy very much at all. Um, I've also read uh, Hidden Pictures by uh, Jason Reculak, uh, which I also didn't really enjoy. Um, so those are, you know, the kind of books I gravitate towards. Those are the kind of books I, I like. I like horror, you know, I like horror fiction. Um, but why do I like horror fiction? Do I like horror fiction because it has haunted houses, like uh, like Hidden Pictures? Do I like horror fiction because it has, um, like, psychic kids with superpowers, like The Institute? Do I like horror fiction because it has zombies, like Girl with All the Gifts? No, I don't like horror fiction for those reasons. I like horror fiction because of how it makes me feel. There's something about horror that just... Um, just the, the that examination of the darker side of things and having to confront them, having to put yourself face-to-face -face with horrible things and the, the sense of relief when you overcome those horrible things. That's what horror gives me. That's why I enjoy horror. And, and I think crime is... You know, slightly different, but but similar. Crime for me is about you know confronting 
the you know the terrible things that happen in our society um and um you know facing up to them and overcoming your your fear of them um and and understanding them you know it's a reading for me crime fiction is you know one of the feelings i get from crime fiction is is i feel like i'm being informed in a way i feel like i'm understanding the darker things that go on in society better and that helps me feel comforted that i can you know i can better protect myself from them i guess but none but you know th- so those are those are things that are very much about feelings and how the books make me feel rather than what's in the books and so these books these three horror books i've talked about have not managed to do that they've not managed to evoke that emotion in me um and when i think about what i've been reading recently you know recently i've been reading a lot of disturbing fiction i've been doing this disturbing fiction project where i'm trying to read you know through a list of books that were recommended for uh, to me by people as disturbing now some of those books are horror books but a lot of them aren't so something like uh so i haven't read this one yet but something like this the end of alice which is supposed to be incredibly disturbing isn't a horror novel it's not a crime novel but i think it will evoke very similar feelings in me as a you know a really well written horror novel the kind of horror novel that that cemented my love of the genre you know will evoke in me uh, and similarly uh, you know something like uh, crash by jg ballard which is i think you know more graphic uh, and, and perhaps closer to horror but still you know you, you would not categorize this as as a horror novel um you know i think that's something else that will that will you know, give me that that buzz, that sense of that sense of horrible fulfilment um, that reading horror does. But these are not books that you would label as horror. So it got me thinking about, you know, why do I like horror? Why do I like crime? What what can I read that gives me the same feelings but doesn't constrain me to a genre? So I've read, you know, these three books I've talked about. I've read for a very specific project that was very specifically about horror fiction. And yet all three of these books have failed me as horror novels because whilst they, you know, definitely definitely are horror novels and would always be shelved as horror novels in a, you know, in a bookstore or whatever, in a way that, you know, um, The End of Alice or Crash wouldn't be, they haven't given me what I look for in a horror novel. And I'm, you know, I'm much more confident that um, The End of Alice will. Um, so yeah so I was thinking about that and and you know Carol whilst it's not the sort of book I normally read has definitely evoked emotions in me um, you know it's it's a it's a beautifully written romance novel so far you know I don't know I don't know how it's going to end I've still got a third to go but it's it's a beautifully written romance novel and even if you don't consider yourself to be a fan of romantic fiction um, I think a lot of people would still um, enjoy reading, you know, about romance. It's one of those things that's so central to our existence as as human beings that there is, um, you know, there's 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 satisfaction in, in reading about it and in reading about other people's um, other people's experience of romance and reflecting on, you know, using that as a mirror to hold up to your own experience of romance. So that's you know very much what my experience of reading Carol has been like. It's made me think about, you know, my own romantic past. And particularly, so, so one of the main characters in the book is uh, is 19 years old. It particularly made me think about, you know, my romantic life as a 19-year-old, which was a very long time ago. Um, so that further got me thinking about books that we consider to be classics. And I think when you think about a um, a classic book, it's often a book that has a lot of different things that is capable of, of you know bringing up in the reader a lot of different emotions so to take things back to like a kind of a really basic level um, and this is something i've talked about in 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 videos before so i think about a disney movie so disney movies are classic kids movies they are you know they are classic movies and they, and they are often um, for people who, um, you know, who grow to love cinema, which, you know, the majority of us, I would say, do. Um, they are foundational in terms of building our understanding of storytelling and, you know, how 
um, you know, how stories can be told in cinema and, and in fiction as well, and, you know, in novels as well. But when you think about a, a Disney film, they're not easy to categorise. They're often kind of fairy tales, um, but not always. Um, they, they don't necessarily easily fit into a particular genre. But what they do almost always have is a real range of emotions that are evoked within the film. So, you know, any Disney film will probably make you laugh, unless you have no sense of humour at all. will probably make you laugh. It will probably have a bit of romance in it. It will probably have some scary scenes in it. It will probably have some exciting scenes in it. It will probably have, you know, scenes where, um, you know, where, where the protagonist, you know, overcomes... Um, you know, obstacles and things like that in a in a thrilling way, a kind of you know, a kind of race against time kind of thing. So those are all things where if you took them individually, you would you would slot them into a particular genre. So you know, the scary stuff you'd put into the horror genre, um, the you know the the romantic elements you put into romance, um, the thrilling elements you might put into you know, kind of an adventure novel um, type thing. So. Classics, what I'm trying to say here is is Disney films and books we consider to be classics, I think often manage quite skillfully to combine mul- the, the emotions that we get from multiple genres into a single work in a way that makes that work satisfying for a really broad range of people. So, you know, I've had bad experiences with Charles Dickens recently, but when you think about Dickens, I think the same is true for Dickens. So there's often, you know, kind of coming of age elements. There's often, you know, sus- suspense and excitement. There's often some, you know, some scarier bits. There's often romance. You know, all those things get, you know, bunched together into a book which, you know, the majority of people, um, me excluded for the moment at least, but the majority of people, you know, find Dickens books to be very fulfilling and um, to, to, you know, contain all of human existence. You know, that's in some ways, I think that's the definition of a classic book is it's a book that wraps together all the different elements of what it means to be human in a way that is um, digestible um, and also to an extent timeless. So, you know, people still read and enjoy Charles Dickens today, despite the fact his books were written a very long time ago. And the reason for that is that that Dickens manages to to tap into the core um, of what it is to be human in a way that is still accessible today. Um, not to me, but to lots of other people. Um, so yeah, so those were kind of my, my slightly rambly thoughts um, on genre. Um, do let me know what you think. And, and I do feel like, you know, certainly for me, I'm coming to realise, perhaps late in life, that, that what I'm really looking for in horror books is, is not things that you can easily label as horror, but but books that are you know that, that raise those kind of emotions in me, um, so it's made me you know reflect on my reading and, and and hopefully it will make me make better choices about my reading going forward and not read three horror books in a row that I don't enjoy um, like I have done so far this month. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. Um, so today a book that definitely evoked uh, those feelings of of horror in me and and also of. Um, you know, a book that really taps into the darker side of, of human existence and, and shines a light on it in such a way that it, that it you know, somehow makes it easier to cope with and to understand. Um, and that book is We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver, which is, I, I think, an absolutely phenomenal book um, and definitely one I would recommend if you haven't read it. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, let me know if you think I'm onto something or if I'm just talking nonsense as usual. Um, and apologies as well, because this is a change to the a change to the advertised schedule. So I was going to put up today the stupidest video I've ever made. Um, I'm going to put that up tomorrow instead, um, because this felt like a more appropriate kind of Sunday afternoon ramble kind of a video. Um, so yeah, look out on Monday for the stupidest video I've ever made. Um, but until then, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.